March 2nd, 2022. Roll call. Around? Here. Butke? Here. Kuhn? Here. Lemsky? Here. Matichek? Here. Reichert? Here. Sandy? Here. Schumacher? Here. Waswick? Here. We have a quorum. Quorum present. Uh, reading approval of the minutes from the February 2nd, 2022 meeting. Mr. Reichert. Move approval. Moved by Mr. Reichert. Second by Mr. Lunsky. <coughs> Call for a vote. Any, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Opposed, same sign. Motion. No, they pass as read. Um, item three. Ordinance to amend Chapter 8, Land Development Code, amending Section 18-03013, relating to off-premise signs. Mr. Brooks. Uh, thank you. So uh, last time preliminary approval, we talked about uh, the uh, city has a cap on uh, off-premise signs, billboards. And uh, the way it's also written in the code is, as the census comes out every 10 years, we expand that cap. So we increase it. Uh, for every 566 people that the city increases, uh, we also increase that cap by that proportional amount. So um, the ordinance before you expands the cap by 11, going from 101 to 112. Um, in addition, uh, there's been some discussion about a 500 foot interpretation on code. Um, I talked about that a little bit on the staff report on the update piece. Um, our recommendation is to uh, perhaps we'd want to do uh, evaluate that a separate way because that wouldn't be necessarily a part of this ordinance, which is just uh, increasing the cap. But I'll, I'll certainly leave that uh, to you folks. And I know we have a couple of uh, companies out here too that may want to discuss that. With that being said, it's a public hearing. Um, we've advertised in the Herald and it is available for public comment. So I'm happy to stand for any questions. Okay, so uh, before we open the public hearing, anybody got anything for Mr. Brooks? Pretty straightforward. Um, I'll open the public hearing at this time. Anybody would like to step up the microphone, address item 3-1, please do so at this time. Not, whoa. Oh, no, <laughs> come on up. Uh, just state your name for the record, please. My uh, name is Josh Gilliland. Um, I guess I'm here to, I'm with uh, iDigital Outdoor and uh, we're billboard operator. And I was here to, wanted to speak today to address the 500 foot uh, separation rule, but it sounds like that may be moved to some sort of subcommittee or possibly, so maybe this is not the correct time to discuss that, but. I, I would kind of agree with you. We, uh, Mr. Brooks and I spoke before the meeting. We would like to, we have a signed subcommittee pre COVID, all that happened, kind of went out of the wayside. So tonight's meeting and a later item, we're gonna have everybody volunteer. So think about that, everybody, as the meeting goes on. And we're gonna just do a whole new science subcommittee okay. and we're gonna get after this. There's there's enough issues and enough questions and enough changes in the signs lately that if you guys all agree, I think everybody's nodding their head, that we're just gonna do that. We got new faces on here. There was old faces that were on that committee. So we just figured we just start over. So, okay. Well, I'll just um, hold your my input. Comments. I got your email now. I okay. appreciate that. Thank yeah. you for that. Your input would be used on, the, you know, we'll, we'll touch base with all of you vendors to make sure you're giving us the information we're looking for. I don't hang signs for a living. I put electrical to them. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. And Thank then, uh, you know, in terms of a sign subcommittee, especially the topic that'll be, we'll invite the uh, known companies that would be interested in that topic as well to the meeting when it's uh, decided when that'll be and we'd be looking to do that in the relatively near, near future so yeah we're thinking in the next 30 days mm -hmm. okay okay um, with that anyone else I'll close the public hearing bring it back to the Commission mr. Reichert move approval move by move by mr. Reichert second by mr. Kuhn any further discussion not seeing any hands. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Capola, same sign. Motion passes. All right. 3-2. Three, 3-2, two. Three two, ordinance to amend Chapter 8, Land Development Code, to amend Section 18-10012, relating to changes to the zoning map and the notification to adjacent properties. Mr. Brooks. Uh, as we stated last time, uh, our intent with this ordinance is to 
double the area for rezonings that we notify around the property, going from 400 to 800 feet. Uh, and it's been advertised in the Herald, and uh, this is a public hearing. So I'll stand for any questions that you may have. And this is what we've asked for, all of us, to open that up so people get notices when their zoning is affected near them. Mr. Matichek? Yeah, is that, uh, it, you have in here that it says changes in boundaries, so I'm assuming a replat would also trigger 800 foot? No, we do, we've never advertised, we've never notified around the property for a replat. So what would be a change in boundaries then? Uh, rezoning, so a zoning boundary. That's it? That's correct, that's the only ones that we do direct mailings. Okay. On, on a boundary, yep. But you are going from 400 to 800 feet for notification. That would be for annexations or rezoning or zoning changes, right? Uh, annexation, we don't go 800 feet around an annexation. We just notify the annex annexation You go where area. for annexation? Uh, just the annexation area. Okay. And those, those can always be, you know, at any point, somebody can request us to go a wider area on something, and that's still in place as well for that 800 feet. If a certain area during preliminary you guys decide, you know what, it makes more sense to go to a wider area, you can let us know at preliminary because that, that notification in terms of mailing goes out after our preliminary approval time, so. Okay, um, any further, I'll open the public hearing. Anybody in the audience like to step up and address this item, please do so at this time. Not seeing anybody, we'll, cl we'll close the public hearing and Moved by Second. Mr. Sandy. Second by who was that? Mr. Lunsky. Um, any further comments, discussions? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. Opposed, same sign. Motion 3-2 passed unanimously. 3-3. Three, three. Uh, item 3-3, three -three, um, there is a, a correction made to the agenda as far as the address on this. Um, it's, the ordin it's the public hearing fast track replat of lot one, block one, Mickelson Landeco fifth three subdivision located at 3101 South 17th Street and 1600 32nd Avenue South. Ms. Edwardson. All right, so we're over at the Northern Air Facility in the old Happy Host um, Hotel that's no longer there. Um, last year we replatted the property into um, one large lot, the owner um, was wanting to do that for flexibility of development. They're now splitting them apart. Um, they've kind of solidified their plans. The lot B, which is the Northern Air site, um, they'd like to further develop. So they've, they've determined where that new lot line is going to be. Um, so that's what this replat is, is going over. Let's see that line here. And I could stand for any questions. Anything from commission? Seeing nothing, open the public hearing. Anybody in the audience like to step up and address? Three, three, do so at this time. Not seeing a stampede, we'll move on and bring it back to the commission. Mr. Reichert. Move approval. Move second. by second by Mr. Budke. Um, any further discussion? Not seeing any hands. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Opposed? Same sign. Motion passes unanimously. Three, four. Item 3-4, public hearing fast track plat of op second edition located at 3751 North Washington Street. Mr. Brooks. I'll uh, quickly go through it. So there's a, a lot up here in North Washington, 3751. Here's the uh, op location that's up on North Washington. Uh, they also own a piece uh, just north of there uh, that, that goes back a ways into the farm field. Um, that's, that's to the north of it and a little bit to the west. Um, the, the request from the owner is to split that property and they're going to essentially split that property where the, the uh, property to the south uh, lines up on the western edge. So they're just bringing this straight up to the north. Uh, so they'll have a property to the west and property to the east. As I understand it, they're going to own uh, lot two and uh, potentially sell lot one. Uh, with that, we're recommending approval. Mr. Aker. I saw a notation in there that we're not requiring an easement, but there's a private agreement that are we comfortable with that? I mean, we are. So right so now, I just I just see thirty years from now that lot being landlocked and somebody coming in and complaining. And I mean, I'm just wondering how we document that. Or yeah. So what what would have to happen is uh, they'll have to figure out how to have somebody go through the property. It's not uncommon on a lot of properties to have that. Usually.
typically commercial, uh, where they're utilizing uh, shared uh, parking spaces or something like that and going through a property. So, um, But usually those are in place before we approve it. Uh, not necessarily. We've had a few that uh, where they've come back through and, and split properties a lot of times for financing. In this case, we're aware that they're going to sell the property. Um, uh, so uh, ultimately, I think the... They'll have the, access from somewhere else. Yeah, they're going to have access from somewhere else. And uh, on this one, I, I doubt that there's a a drawn up agreement that'll be for access in, in the long run uh, is my anticipation. Uh, let's say that deal, let's say he, he ends up retaining this at some point in the future, he'll have to come up with some other way to get through his property and to do a some sort of shared access agreement. So is there some sort of notation on the plat or something so that we know yeah. that it has to, because I mean, obviously they could say, well, I need an easement, for, I want it through a different area, you know? Yeah, through these, uh, through the comments on the what we have here, those become part of the record. Okay. And uh, typically, we go back and research those any time we see something else come up. Uh, the, those uh, become part of the record. It seems like we had a problem with another op property when we were like north of Happy Harry's or something. For we did have a yeah. uh, well, where that uh, remember that um, aggregate? Yeah. I think it was yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't remember. I think the uh, the Here's access. A I think the problem there was that the, I think there was a disagreement the on access. whether or not that right away was going to be vacated or not. That's I think okay. it's, it's that area. I'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, thanks. <laughs> All right. That's it for uh, staff. Anything else before I open the book? Mr. Matichek? Yeah, you've got 12 different uh, things that they have to come up with on the, uh, on the agreement here. The one that uh, seems to trigger something in my mind is number four. Provide document for English Cooley diversion right away. Uh, doc so and so does not include this right away. So what are you saying there that you have to have? If this property is split, they'll have to give a right away to the English Cooley diversion. Maybe Mr. Grasser can answer that one. I don't know. Uh, seems kind of a silly request on there, unless you have some other purpose in mind. Well, I have, I have to confess that I really don't know the answer. I th I'm speculating what's going on here is that that whole area was unplotted. And so they probably, some of these, because they were never platted, some of these things show up in a larger document of which this property now is, is a part of. Well, that's my, that's yeah, my okay, guess. Okay, so say, it, say it's developed one thing, that's one thing. But say it's not developed, it turns back into the farm field, which is what it was, has been for the last, ever since uh, Mr. Opp owned it, it's been farmed. It's just farmland back there. Um, I think Mr. Bridgeford owns all the rest of the land around it, but they farmed that quarter back there. So it just seems, it seems like something, I don't, I, I don't understand this. Why do you need to provide a document for English Cooley diversion there? If I can answer that, it looks like it's on the plat. So where the English Cooley Diversion property is, I think they have the wrong document numbers. So when the English Cooley Diversion came in, they, they put this document number 581400. And what our uh, surveyors have found is that's not the correct document number. I think that's the only thing that they're, they're pointing out here is that the correct document number should be there for where that transfer So there occurred. is a document number for that then? Yeah, for when this English Cooley diversion, there's a document that was filed at the county and it looks like this 581400, when they researched that, that was the wrong document number. They're asking them to get the right one and put it on the plat. Well, and, oh, go ahead. okay, so what does that entitle, what, what, what does that entitle the landowner to do? To try well, to in this case, English nothing, Cooley? it's just, it's on the plat. So in this case, it's surrounding property that was identified on the plat. Okay. See how this is, it's up on the north edge here. What they're just trying to show when this was put into place, English Cooley diversion, when so this was it, purchased. Is it, is it a part of the bigger piece of property that's around it? Yeah, this is that whole English Cooley diversion that right, runs on the right. south side of 40th. There's a document number that was filed at at the county that was part of that purchase when the, when this became when this was filed at the county they just have the wrong document number there it and seems like that's got to get cleared up here before you guys should go through with this period yeah 
So that's actually a separate lot already. The English coolie that's shown there, it's a, already right. a dedicated lot. Yeah. Um, so there isn't anything. It's it's under the city ownership right now. Um, so the it's only under, thing missing, it's under the city ownership right now, the English Curly plot. Diversion, yes. Yep, the lot. Under the supervision of the Corps of Engineers. Sure. So it's a, it's okay. a research, I don't miss. It's a typo on, yes. the, it's a typo on here yes. in terms of this document number. They're telling them to put the right document number on there. I don't think the English Cooley diversion ownership is in question here. No. They're I'm, just asking for that. Correct number to be put on what, place. What I'm what I'm questioning is is does this allow drainage into that English Coulee diversion with the right of way? Uh, that would be a I, I don't know the answer to that question. I guess I would have to because those fields drain into Highway 81 and then they. Yeah, this doesn't change any of that. Okay. Th this is just asking for the put the right. It, it'd be like misspelling a name, saying spell the name correctly. It's it's not changing anything. It's just getting the right document um, noted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we could maybe make it part of the motion, Frank, to straighten that out. That's what it's already in there. Well, so it's already in there. So we're good. You've got, you've got your twelve items that they yeah. have to come up with to do this. So, so we're okay. But if you have a public hearing, we we'll have it done. Yep. Anything? Anybody else? I'll I'll open the public hearing. Uh, anybody would like to step up to the microphone address item 3-4, please do so at this time. Uh, just state your name and address so they can record it in the record. Dennis Cadillac, 3900 North Washington Street. Thanks, Mr. Cadillac. I'm right across from that. Okay. And if you're going to split that, are you going to allow me to split mine? I guess uh, that would by be... by allowing them to split that, it's really going to cause a crisis with mine. So I want to... See if you're going to give me the okay to split mine now while you're trying to decide if you're going to split that one. Because I feel if that one's going to be split, mine should be able to be split also. Because mine is not going to be split unevenly like that one is. Mine will be split. Mr. Cadillac, have you brought it up with the planning department? So no, can I didn't it? even okay. find out about this until just a couple days ago. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't answer that question unfairly. I. I it's got to be brought to the planning department. They go through all the background, then they bring it to us to take a look at it. So I wish I could answer that question. I just can't. Well, I, I would wish that all you members would keep that in the back of your minds. When, when my petition comes up, if this one goes through, that this is the reason why I'm asking for it. So you can't turn around and say later that, you know, you were out of where you, I'm telling you right now, if this is done, I have reason I need to do that. That's a fair request. You should come into the planning department and, and take that up with them. I will do that, and I thank you so much, sir. Mr. Yeah, I just, is there something specific? It's fairly easy to change a plat. I mean, as long as you fit within the meets and bounds, as long as you've got a building in there that meets the setback requirements, that's really what we're trying to do here. So it, is there something that you want to do that you're worried about? or? Because it's, it's usually pretty easy to get a, a something like yeah. this accomplished. Well, see, and... and if I split it, both pieces would have access to the road. They both have accesses now. Where like this one doesn't even have an access to the road. Mine right. both have accesses. So mine should be more easily split. My guess is if you want to split it, it's pretty easy. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Cadillac. Anyone else? Please state your name and address for the record. Craig Spicer, 3225 North Washington. Just a couple questions. Okay, who actually owns the land right now? Mr. Opstel? Yes, Mr. Okay. Opp, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about the purchase agreement? I do not have a copy of that. Okay, who's the buyer? I assume, uh, well, I don't have that, but I assume it's uh, the uh, Fufang USA. Okay, you assume. This is kind of reminding me of the city council meeting that we've been to for the last month that every time we ask a, ask a question, nobody gives us an answer. Mr. Fielder himself was the one that uh, he had no answers for any questions we asked him. Okay, so now I come to this meeting to find something out. You don't know anything about it. Can you tell us what the purchase price was per acre? I cannot because I don't have that document. Okay, that's what I thought. Now. Just for your information, uh, on video, 
Mr. Phelan had a, about a three hour meeting with Fufan. And in that meeting, somebody can clarify this, maybe you can, Mr. Brooks. They said that he said it was okay for the Fufang Chinese group to uh, use the English diversion coolie to let uh, waste, uh, raw wastewater head to the Red River. Do you know anything about that? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. And, and Mr. Just, Spicer, I, I, get, I get it. Uh, the problem is with this, there's property rights, and Mr. Op has every right in the world to split this property. And this volunteer board can't decide if we let them, or, you know, if we got to follow the boundaries. No, and yeah, and I, to, I, us, I, to us, I'm not being I, critical of you guys I, at all. Yeah, I, just, I can't even tell you. I want, I can't to, even I want tell to give you. you some information, too. I'm sure you're probably well aware of most of this. No, I appreciate but it. But I haven't gotten an answer from anybody for anything. Yeah, I, okay. I appreciate it, Mr. Spicer. And, you and know this that. thing's on the fast track, Steve. Yeah. Okay. The fast track is what makes me and a lot of people nervous. Okay. Been here all my life. There's no reason to fast track this thing through. And I hope you guys this, understand that too. Just, just so you know, this, the point. This, this comes can I finish? fast track can I finish? all the time. Yep, you can. I just okay. let you know. Okay, thank you. Let me speak if I get there. It doesn't happen very often. I'm sorry, Steve. <laughs> okay, but there's a lot of facts here. And I think that the more you know, if you're coming from me, the more I know, the better decision I can make on this. And when this thing started about a month ago, they kept us in the dark. We didn't know a thing. We've asked all kinds of questions again from you know, whoever and wherever that's connected to the city. We have no answers. I hope for your sake, when you make this decision, you can get some answers. I Thank appreciate you. that. No, I do. Thank you, Mr. Spicer. Okay. Um, seeing nobody else, I'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the committee. Mr. Reichert. Move approval. Moved by Mr. Eichert. Second. Second by Ms. Sandy. Any further discussion? See, oh, Mr. Matichek. Yeah, um, I've never liked fast tracks. We started doing this after the flood because we weren't business friendly. And all fast tracks ever tells me is somebody wants to get something done too quick, they didn't have their paperwork done quite right, or whatever. And uh, I think this commission, I'm going to vote against this. I was going to make a motion to table it, but it sounds like it's not going to happen anyway. So um, I just want the commission to be aware of that. Um, I think there's no reason to pass this tonight. It can come up. You're, you're supposedly going to have another meeting at the middle of the month, right? Is I, that I just, set in stone or what? No, no, that gets tabled here later in this meeting. Okay, so there won't be another meeting till April? Correct. Okay. Okay. We discussed that. You, so but we why didn't not? Know, why we not? didn't know at the time you and I discussed that. Okay. Right. Right. So why not just bring this up in April because you're probably going to have a much larger plat, which this will be a part of. But I can't. I don't know, Frank. I'm struggling because you can't. I can't really look at one and not the. You know what I mean? I can't look outside that and look at the whole thing. I, I gotta I look understand. At Mr. I understand the way this piece of property. I just gotta look at Mr. Ops request. Sure. Right? I understand how this That's piece all I of property do. sticks out there. It's a red herring. You yeah. know, and this was all done before there was even a planning and zoning commission, before there was even two mile zoning. That's how that property got stuck out there. It was going to be a trailer park. It never happened. <laughs> so, you know, I did not know that. You're yeah. always good with history, Frank. I appreciate it. Well, if you it. want a history of the property, I'll tell you. Gil Eide <laughs> built those buildings and he built mobile homes out there. I know you know. That's and, a, and he, he was going to build you. a mobile home park on this that's why this piece of property stuck out when he bought it he bought it from the farmland to do that and that's why it's there Great. but I, I still think this is going to be part of a bigger plat and we could wait till next month so uh, i'll just leave it there mr Eichert. thanks uh just for mr spicer and anybody else i know that Planning and zoning is riveting TV, and everybody probably watches it all the time. But uh, every replat we've ever done is a fast track. This is no different than any other replat we've ever done since I've been on this commission for 15 years. Um, and I've also never seen a purchase agreement or gotten that information, nor, nor do I need to delve into every business owner's transaction that comes in here and have it broadcast on TV. I have some concerns about this project as well. I understand uh, what people are asking for, but this is there's nothing out of the ordinary in what we're doing here, and this is this is 
the one of the simplest tasks we do. So. Can I speak again? Sure. <laughs> you can, Mr. Spicer. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we'll I just keep it to about the this purchase agreement. What? Okay, as far as I've heard right now, it's a handshake. It's twenty-six thousand dollars an acre. That's that's not out of the ordinary to you, Mr. Riker. I, I don't really get into what how people want to do a, a business that's deal. If here. they want to, if they want to do it on a handshake, if they want to hire a lawyer like me, except one that does land sale contracts, then they can do that. But we've never asked for that before, and why would it matter in any other transaction? I've never seen anybody ask for that. And, and again, I understand, I've, I've watched you speak a number of times. I, a number of your concerns, I agree with. But this just isn't the place for that. I mean, not in trying to decide if a business owner should be able to split his land into two pieces or not. Well, the reason I'm here, and the bottom line is, we didn't get any answers from the city council. So you're next in line. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to lay this on you, but somebody, someplace, is going to show enough concern about us giving up our property to a foreign country, starts out as agricultural land. That makes me suspicious. All of a sudden, it's in your hands now. So you can't just say it's just another deal, because you have to rezone it to get it to continue on the road of what I call the downfall of the, of the city first and then probably our country later on. And you can take that as you want, but if you watch what's going on in the world today, and it makes me very suspicious, so I hope you are a little more suspicious than you seem to be right now, okay? There's a lot of things going on. Uh, uh, the handshake between Xi Jinping and Mr. Putin and Mr. Putin invading the Ukraine. Uh, I think we should be a little more suspect. That's, that's why I'm here. Okay. I'm not some radical guy. I've been here all my life. Everybody knows me. I just expect a fair shake, and I expect some answers. And I wish you people would come up with some answers. How can you sit there and push a multi-million, billion-dollar deal and not give anybody any answers? I don't understand that. What's so hard about that? We, I, we, I, Very frustrating. I, I understand, Mr. Spicer. It's way out of our court right now. We're going to see the zoning on it in a month. Hopefully we get polished up and know what we're looking at then. Okay. Right now we got nothing in front of us. Mr. Opp does this multiple times a year oh, and, sure. and so <laughs> in yeah. different places. So it's kind of like it's a well, pretty easy deal. I understand I that you. this is kind of business as usual for you. but Just for, this, for this, just this part, the rest of it is no fun either for a volunteer <laughs> committee. <laughs> Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. I'm sorry, but I have something very pertinent to this. Okay? I, I didn't mention it before, but... This is the last one because we have closed it. Thought that they were going to run through my property to bring power over to this piece of property. But I'm not going to give them the easement for that. And they just found that out today. So Mr. Opp might have a whole different idea about it when he finds out that he's not going to be able to get the electrical run over there. No, nope. good information. So it's, it's very pertinent to what you're doing, so you know that ahead of time. Thanks, Mr. Cadillac. All right, I think we're ready to vote on this. Um, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item 3 4. Item dash 3 dash 5. Yes, we're on 3 5. 3 dash 5, sorry. <laughs> sign appeal for Green Mill outdoor sign located at 1930 South Columbia Road. Ms. Halford. Good evening. So we're changing a little bit different part of the city. We're in the middle of the city. Um, we're looking at what now we call the Crooked Pint Ale House. Um, they're just looking at adding some more signage. It's signage that um, we typically don't allow. It's um, what's called a blade sign. Um, they're just requesting to add two signs. Um, that will come out five foot, five foot by six inches by three by two. Um, as you can see up on your screens, one will be located here and one about a little bit back further. What they're really wanting to do is offer Green Mill pizza to go. So they want to have signage that will reflect that at the property. So and it's I just going to stick out from the building? It is. Yep. It doesn't get in the way of any kind of car traffic or anything or Mr. I Riker. think it fits. 
does it meet all if it was flat against it it would meet all the other requirements it would um code only allows two feet away from the building and so that's why that's why it's coming Megan, that's why you don't normally allow the right. blade sign okay okay there's a public hearing on this also um so i'll open the public hearing anybody like to address item three five please do so at this time I see anyone uh, bring it back to committee, close the public hearing. Mr. Reichert. Move approval. Move by Mr. Reichert, second by Mr. Matichek. Any further discussion? I don't see any hands. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. All right, motion carries. Communication preliminary approvals. Item 4-1, vacate ingress, egress easement at 1714 Mill Road. Mr. Brooks. Uh, this item has been withdrawn. Uh, due to some other issues and we had some discussion whether it should be tabled or withdrawn at this time it's just gonna be, be with withdrawn so you would okay Dr. to bring it back okay thank you um, reports and from the planning department uh, so we, we were looking at a special meeting thank you for those who were able to uh, comment back at this time we're gonna we're gonna ask for that to be pulled we're not gonna request for you guys to have a special meeting and uh, all those items would be moved to the April um, regular scheduled meeting. Okay. Thank you for that. And then we'll, the last item will just be that sign sub. Yep. Other business. I was going to say, do I have any volunteers? Probably looking at three or four. Zit for to be on the sign subcommittee. <laughs> There's some gentle hands going up halfway. <laughs> Another. Hey, you got Pete here. Got got. I'll do it. So you're good? I'll go this way this time? If you have enough, that's fine. Otherwise, I will volunteer. But you four? We're good? And, and I suppose by proxy, I'll have to sit in on some of it. You, Megan, Jamie, and Pete? And Alex. Oh, and Alex, okay. He had his finger up first. I don't know if it was that finger. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't sure which one he was pointing at me all right sounds good thank you and we'll be in touch with uh, with you guys to start uh, and then and like we said them. before we really are counting on the sign companies to help us out with this maybe some guiding I know you guys see it in all the other towns I hear from you every time a weird sign comes up that the city doesn't allow so we will be reaching out to you on this and we would appreciate your insight and your expertise all right uh, the one yep. other thing, Ooh. land use sub or land use plan, we have that uh, public meeting next Tuesday, uh, 4:30 to 6. 4:36. We'll send it out to your email just to remind you again, and uh, we'll be sending it out to others as well. So emails, perfect. All right. Thank Thanks. you, Mr. Kuhn. As you say, motion to adjourn. <laughs> so moved. Thank you. Yes. Oh, before I knock yeah. my gavel. Before you knock, <laughs> wait with the gavel. I just, I know that we're going to be seeing some of this from Bufang, and I know that the city council is going to make the ultimate decision, but in for respect of everyone's time who we will likely be seeing, there's benefit in going back to watching some of the city council meetings, which <laughs> I'm so fun that I watch most of them. Um, but there is great information, and I... I feel like I, I know we're a volunteer committee, but I think we owe it to the public to at least watch so that we know what the concerns are, and maybe it can save some time for I would, those people coming before us. I would uh, jump on that with you. That you know, as Mr. Spicer said, get yourselves educated. You're going to want to know what's going on with this. I think it's important. Mr. Riker? I guess as long as we're doing that, there, there is one thing that I'll just tell you when that meeting comes up that was brought up in those city council meetings. On an annexation, we don't usually know what the specials are going to be, but I'm definitely going to want to know those before I vote on that. So That's why the meeting got delayed from okay. this month to the middle of the month to the following month because Perfect. I did say I would, Mr. Brooks can attest to this, I will table this if the people out there do not know the cost. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Cool. That's good. I will table.